and welcome to WRPB and WRPB Studios. You know, technology is a blessing and a curse. And I don't think we, as normal individuals who run through life, know much about what happens with these cell towers, with this smart meters and everything like that. With me is Greg Rita from Golden Soul. I get it right? Good morning. Yes, that's correct. Okay. So... There's so much going on, and we only have a certain amount of time to get out some information. And I think the information I wanted to get out was about a thing called EMF, is that right? Yes, electromagnetic force or fields. Okay. And I don't think most people have any clue what it is. Well, any time that you use uh, radio frequency or remote controls, cell phones, uh, electronic devices such as a microwave oven or, or uh, even a TV screen, you will produce some electromagnetic fields. Some people are highly susceptible to those, and other people have less uh, susceptibility to them, less sensitivity to them. Um, and so we've kind of got uh, one group of people that are very uh, adamant about <laughs> having reducing the EMF and, and banning cell towers and not using the 5G meter, smart meters on their home. Right. We've got another group that sort of just ignores the whole thing, and we're, we're sort of in the middle. We're going to do the 80-20 thing and, and and so I would compare it to the, how we look at the sunshine here in the state of Florida at one time when I was a kid my mom and dad would say go out in the sun that little sunburn won't hurt you any now we know that it will but we don't avoid the sun totally it's part of our life right but we do distance ourselves from it we protect ourselves a little bit from it and so with the EMF it's the same sort of thing we're not going to do away with cell phones and wireless controls but we can avoid the, uh, some of the intensity of it because it's distance, duration, and power level and frequency that matter. So if you can mitigate any of those things, get further away from it or lower the power or not be in the, in the environment as long, you'll help yourself out. Well, we know that we're not going to stop progress. We can't. Right. Okay, and I don't know if I'm correct, but... The electric companies and the cell companies, those utility companies, have rights that we can't infringe on. So, basically, they have the right to what they believe is benefiting the masses to do things that might be negative to the environment and to humans, but they're going to do them anyway. So... Let's talk about the thing that's on everybody's mind today, which is 5G. Okay. Because we're forced now. They're pushing us t to get 5G. How dangerous is 5G? I, I don't consider any of this dangerous any more than the sun is dangerous. Okay. But if you can, if you can do some simple things with your, with your cell phone, for example, uh, I use my cell phone a lot. Okay. I've got a headset that has an air break in it. The electronics are down by the phone, and then uh -huh. it has air. So it's got me three feet away from my cell phone. And that reduces the power quite a bit that I'm exposed to. I've also added a landline in my home, and I use that more often than my cell phone. But to walk around for hours on end with that cell phone two inches from your brain is probably not as, as, as healthy as it should be because a cell phone operates at the exact same frequency as your microwave oven. Oh, wow. And the microwave oven may be 1,500 watts and your cell phone only one watt, but nevertheless, um, that's, that's radiation we don't need. And over a period of time, you, you use your microwave, you know, you put it in for three minutes, and you walk away from it. Right. Here, it might be one minute, but you're on it constantly. I mean, it might be one watt of power, whatever. You're on it constantly, and it's right against your face. Right, and then you throw the phone in your in your front pocket by your, <laughs> right. by your heart, or in your or in your a pants pocket by other parts of your body <laughs> that probably don't need to be radiated. That's that's probably true. So, <clears throat> what I'm getting from you, who has the experience, is that we already know we can't get rid of 5G. It's coming, or here, or whatever. But we have to think of our own health and how we can mitigate some of the issues by doing actually some simple things. Yeah, there's some simple things that we can do. Like like use, if you're gonna be on the cell phone a lot, use one of the, the, the wireless, the air tube 
uh, earphone headset things. Right. And they're they're about fifteen bucks, twenty bucks for a good one. There, there's a dozen of them on Amazon and eBay. Uh, you can you can, if you're really concerned, you can shut your Wi-Fi off at night, or you can turn your cell phone off at night if you're not taking emergency calls or something. Because the cell phone, even if you're not talking on it, it sends a pulse out, a pretty strong pulse, every few minutes to tell the tower where it's located. So a cell phone that's not being used still produces Some EMF. Yeah. Okay. But that's not the only thing that gives us EMF waves. You mentioned no. microwave. And I get the microwave thing, but it doesn't bother me as much because, like I said, I push the button, minute, two minutes... But I walk away from it, so there's a distance away. <coughs> what more concerns me is what somebody told me, is the new electric meters that we have are smart meters. So they run off of um, radioactive or uh, radio waves, right? Right. They send a signal similar to a cell phone signal every four or five minutes. They send a pulse out. And again... I would just say, don't put the head of your bed. Your bedroom is a, is a sanctuary. That's where you can spend, depending on, I'm, I'm an insomniac, so four hours, but <laughs> some people spend eight or ten hours in right. their bedroom. When I first got involved with this, my wife works uh, at home, and, and she had, our bed was here, and she had her desk next to the bed with the, with the Wi-Fi uh, modem right next, I mean, two feet from her head. Ah. We just moved it, her bed, our bed to the other corner of the room, and that cut the signal strength by a, a lot. And then we turn it off at night now. Okay, so <coughs> my question is, or the thought is, that no matter what you do at this juncture in your home, there are going to be radio waves going through the house. There, there probably will be something. Something. Because if we go to 1850, if I do a graph about how many radio signals and, and magnetic waves were bouncing around the planet, in 1850, there's a little background noise. If I drew a graph, I would have in 1850, I'd have a one-inch bar on the graph. Okay. And today, I would have the Empire State Building. Wow. That's, that's how much. We, it's a, it's 100,000 times more radiation than, than we had before. And we haven't had time to adapt. I mean, you know, human nature or, or um, whatever you want to call it, that's not much time for people to adapt to a change of that magnitude. Okay, so we discussed it. Hey, you know what? Turn your Wi-Fi off or keep your phone away from your head or change your bed to make sure that your meter is not by mm -hmm. your head. <clears throat> I have seen these little kind of disky things that they say put on the back of your phone or here. Do those work? Oh, I, I, I don't want to comment on that. I think they, they, they probably work a little bit. Okay. but um, It's not the definitive answer. No, because if you weaken the signal, your cell phone has, a, has the ability to modulate the power that it's transmitting with. So if you're the, well, the further away you are from the tower, the stronger the signal your cell phone's putting out. So it can so reach your you, tower. You sort of, if, yeah, so if you sort of block that signal, I'm not sure that you've, you've helped yourself a whole lot. Interesting. You know, <coughs> we're sometimes sold a bill of goods, but the facts don't change, okay? There are radio waves out there. There's nothing you can do to stop them. Okay, and it goes back to the beginning of this conversation, which is what we have to learn to do is mitigate some of this for our own well-being and our own health. My question now becomes, all right, so here's my house. How do I know how much radio waves are there? Are there tests? Can you call people to test? Can, can, you know, can people check? Yeah, yes, there's, there's people that are, are certified to test and, and give you a report on your on your, your building site or even a new home that or, or, or you know home that you're thinking of purchasing uh, those uh, cost two to three hundred dollars to have it done and there's a couple people here in the Vero Beach area I'm one I'm a certified EMF analyst and and uh, and mitigator um, but there's there's some other people also so you would actually come to the house and I guess you have certain equipment <coughs> that I guess, it, I hate to say it, but it, it's probably a wireless piece of equipment yeah. that gets um, the, what you call it, that gets the signals and, yeah. and can read them. This is a, this kind of a up. Standard, standard kit. First, we have a, a compass so that when we're studying radio waves, we, we go all four directions.